Uhuru Kenyatta led the nation on Saturday in marking its 56th Labor Day celebrations in State House Nairobi for the second consecutive year. The celebrations occasioned by the coronavirus pandemic yet again lacked the usual pomp and color and comes at a time when the labor sector is grappling with the harsh effects of a third wave of the COVID-19 disease. David Mudoka reports. <laughs> With just a band, a few invited guests, among them top government and labor officials, journalists and its occupant, President Uhuru Kenyatta, State House Nairobi played host to the 56th Labor Day celebrations for the second year in a row on Saturday. Just like last year, the celebrations were marked in strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines, among them social distancing and the wearing of masks. But the trademark song and dance, often associated with the day achievements of Kenya's labor movement are commemorated, were not the only missing cogs today. Smiles on the faces of most Kenyan workers were missing as well. For the past 14 months, since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus in the country, streets, markets, industries and institutions have depicted a sorry state. Employees have been rendered jobless. Others have been forced to take pay cuts, while some businesses have closed shop for good, with the worst hit sectors including hospitality, aviation, education, transport and logistics. Cogs in the manufacturing sector have stopped turning as fast as they did and indeed it is not lost on me that the people most affected by these unfortunate events are the workers of our country. Despite President Uhuru Kenyatta rolling out post-COVID-19 recovery measures in various presidential addresses in the past, the situation has gone from bad to worse over the three waves of the COVID pandemic. According to the Federation of Kenya Employers, at least 604 farms in Kenya sent workers home due to the coronavirus fallout in the past 12 months and around 2 million people made redundant. We can still meet and make some minor adjustments here and there when it comes to terms of either minimum wage or the negotiated collective bargaining agreements to make sure that those who are serving under these difficult situations, their pockets are not depleted because people are really suffering. So we call upon all the political players to embrace social dialogue and tolerance especially as we head to the general elections next year. But President Kenyatta has assured workers that the government will not relent in cushioning its labor force while also calling on Kenyan industries to remain innovative and stand tall in the face of the COVID-19 threat. I would like to take mention of two innovative industries during the past 14 months of COVID. The first one is Hella, Hella Clothing Limited, the second industry I'd like to mention is Betty Investments, a Kenyan apparel company based in Akuru. The success of these two companies and a mention was made possible because they were not paralyzed by the COVID crisis, but instead seized the opportunity and created innovations. But above all, their innovations preserved the much needed jobs and even created new ones. And while most people are losing jobs, with the job market getting more hostile by the day, what then does it mean for graduates staring at a bleak future? The Ministry of Labor and Social Protection has developed national internship policy, which will provide the necessary framework for implementation of internship. With the labor sector still deep in the woods, this year's Labor Day could potentially go down in history as hopeless and dull as last year's. <laughs> For the second year in a row, State House played host to Labor Day celebrations, but with that, top Labor officials have called on President Uhuru Kenyatta to deliberately come to the rescue of a sector choking under the COVID-19 scourge. David Mudoka, TV47 at State House, Nairobi.